Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone to uh, grading thoughts in this video. And these are both uh, ideas that came from other people. The first one was about a month ago, I did a video um, just sort of asking why the grading trends continue to go up and up in terms of number of cards submitted in the, uh, in the, in the hobby. Every month, it basically you know breaks the record for number of cards submitted, or it's right around the record. It's just continuing to go up and up and up. It's been that way for for months, if not years now. Uh, this is the gem rate data of how many cards were submitted to each company yesterday, or uh, yesterday as I record this on December twenty first. So PSA received sixty nine thousand cards on December twenty first uh, for grading. SGC eight thousand, you know CGC and Beckett around three thousand. And PSAs received 1.2 million cards over the past 30 days. That's basically right in line with the all-time record. It'll con it's just continues to go up. And uh, quick side note: Gemrate is a fantastic, uh, fantastic website that, that puts out all sorts of data like this. They're they're not a sponsor in any way, but uh, really, really great uh, resource for this sort of data. But uh, what I asked a month ago is, I don't understand why these numbers continue to go up, because for me as a dealer. Uh, I'm finding that it makes financial sense to, to grade fewer and fewer cards. You know, card values have come way down. Graded card values have come way down. PSA has gotten stricter with their grading. From a pure financial standpoint, it makes sense to send in a lot fewer cards today than it did six months ago or a year ago or two years ago. You know, if I bought a collection, uh, let's say a year ago, uh, and, and pulled out a bunch of cards for grading, if I bought that exact same collection today, the number of cards I would pull out for grading would be way, way less. So, you know, again, to me, it seems like the numbers should be going down, but we're seeing the exact opposite. The, the numbers continue to go up. The explanation for that, in short, is ultra modern. Uh, we'll dive into it deeper here. You know, ultra modern, the ultra modern is where the numbers are really inflated. People are sending in so many ultra modern cards, and especially present year cards, 2023, uh, you know, product. And uh, somebody told me, just go to eBay and look at 2023 tops PSA 10 completed sales. Only looking at PSA 10s here. So we're not even looking at 9s and 8s and things like that. But if we plug 2023 tops PSA 10 into eBay, uh, we're going to see you know just a, a, a boatload of, of cards listed for sale. There's only over 14,000 uh, listings on eBay. But if we uh, scroll down and, and just look at the completed sales, that's where we start to see, or the it's not even completed, the, the sold items, items that actually sold. And uh, sort this by by lowest first, so we're only looking at the cheapest stuff. This is where we start to see, and, and the first item is not PSA, but every basically everything else is PSA tens. This, but this is where you start to see just stuff that it makes no sense to have gotten graded, right? Dollar, dollar, five dollars, dollar. Uh, Jeremy Pena insert dollar twenty five. Wander Franco three dollars twenty five. Cody Bellinger blue refractor PSA ten two dollars and twenty five cents as a best offer. Uh, you know Hunter Green PSA ten two dollars and fifty. I mean. You know, PSA costs nineteen dollars to grade a card, and nineteen dollars—that's the minimum. Uh, there may have been a special at some point where it's like fifteen, or I, I don't—I don't even think there was. There, there may have been, but it's nineteen dollars basically to grade a card. That doesn't even factor in shipping and insurance both ways. So you, you're really probably more at like twenty-one dollars a card or something like that if you were being truthful. You know, look at all these sales: four dollars, five dollars. You know, four dollars. These are all again PSA tens. Um, we didn't even look at the PSA nines. Now this is capturing all Topps products of 2023. You know, Topps, Topps Chrome, Topps Now. It's it's mostly baseball with a little bit of soccer, uh, and the pr products have been released throughout the year. So it's fair to say some of these were probably worth more when they first came out. Here, look, here's an autographed PSA 10 rookie uh, for four dollars and eighty one cents. Uh, it's fair to say that probably some of these were worth a lot more when they f the product first came out, but and have dropped since then. But you know, a lot of these not so much and. None of these products have been out that long. I mean, you know, if a product came out in February and you you opened up a box and you sent stuff to PSA, maybe you got it back a couple months later. You know, you know, we're into April, May. I mean, it's six months at the most. Some of these items have been on the market, and they're already down to five dollars, five dollars, six dollars. Remember again, PSA grading fee is nineteen dollars for their cheapest service, and you know these PSA tens, meaning you you've you've hit the you've hit the grade you wanted, the, the best grade you can possibly get, uh, are, are worth you know five dollars. Now that, that was page one. Uh, we're going to jump ahead here to page nine. There were sixty items on that page, and we'll jump ahead here to page nine, and we're still in the fifteen dollar range. Um, still not covering the grading fee or or even close really. Julio Rodriguez fourteen dollars. Adley Rushman sixteen dollars, and it just sort of got me thinking like why are all these cards being submitted? It just you know, from a financial standpoint, it, it obviously doesn't make sense uh, as a dealer. I, I can't come up with an explanation. If you were a pure collector and you wanted these cards for your collection, 
it would just make more sense to just buy the card graded. Here's a Shohei Otani insert, PSA 10, $15. Um, you know, if you if you own that Otani and you wanted it in a PSA 10, you should just go on eBay and buy it for $15 as opposed to submit it. So wh why are people submitting these sort of cards in these masses? Again, you can understand it if it was a, a smaller number, but there's just so many. I mean, I'm scrolling through, it's just endless. $15, $15. Cards that just don't cover the grading fee in a PSA 10. Now, I suspect that this is mainly due to, you know, the fact that maybe people just haven't caught on to this yet. And you know, a couple of years ago, this formula made sense. You could open up a box of 2021 product and submit a bunch of base cards and, and, and the cheaper inserts and parallels and get a bunch of PSA 10s and some 9s and you'd, you'd be doing real well because the card market was booming. Everything was selling so high, but things have come so far down in the last couple of years, especially in the ultra modern world, that this just doesn't make sense anymore. And, and you know, clearly people have not caught on to this yet, as, as you can see here, thousands of examples of cards not covering the grading fee in a PSA 10. And every one of these listings represents a, a, somebody having lost money in the card hobby. And to me, that's, a you know, in the same way that people say, you know, uh, newer collectors getting into the hobby, if they go into breaking and they lose a bunch of money in a break, that's not a good way to have someone enter the hobby. It's the same thing with grading here, right? I mean, here's a Mike Trout insert, PSA 10, $18. I mean, somebody lost money submitting that to PSA. And I would sort of say it's the same thing. There's probably a lot of newer uh, people trying to grade cards and, and haven't sort of figured it out yet, and, and they're losing money. And so I'm going to assume and and hope really that we see a lot less of this in 2024 and, and moving forward. You know, people submitting really cheaper, ultra-modern cards to, to PSA, and not just PSA, all the grading companies, uh, where it just, it just doesn't make financial sense. And, and, you know, the value of your PSA 10 doesn't even cover the grading fee again i don't think that's that's healthy again every one of these listings represents somebody having lost money in the hobby probably the vast majority are sort of newer collectors um and you know i would just like to see you know a lot less of that moving forward but that's it for the first grading thought of the video before i jump into the second uh, i just want to quickly say happy holidays to everyone merry christmas i hope everyone has you know a fantastic holiday season with family and loved ones or, or whoever you spend your your time with and uh, you know, thank you for all the continued support of the channel throughout the years. I, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I truly hope everyone has, you know, a, a great, a great holiday season. All right. The second grading thought is a comment that was left on my last regular rollers video where I was uh, showcasing this Daryl Strawberry card. This Daryl Strawberry was purchased by Patrick. He actually purchased the complete set, opened it and sent this strawberry off for grading. And he, you know, looking at it, he, th he thought it basically looks perfect, super sharp all around. Now he sent it to PSA and it graded a five. So he was very confused by the five. Uh, he cracked it and then sent it to SGC, and SGC graded a three. So, uh, you know, this is not a critique of SGC here. I'm going to assume that there's a technical issue with the with the card. Maybe it's got a surface wrinkle or a surface crease or something that we can't see in the photos here uh, because both PSA and SGC graded it real low. So I'm, I'm going to assume that's correct. But if you remember, completely unrelated, about a month ago or so, uh, this 1914 Babe Ruth card sold for $7.2 million and is actually the third highest selling sports card of all time. And it's also great in SGC3. And the comment in the video was left by Montreal Sports 29. He wrote, so are we supposed to believe that the 1983 Strawberry SGC3 is in the same condition as the 1914 Babe Ruth SGC3 that recently sold for $7.2 million? Yet another reason why card grading is blank, fill in the blank. And I don't know why, but when I read this, I just... I was like, this is such a good point. You know, I, I, I'm a believer in card grading. My PC cards are all graded. I sell a lot of graded cards. I submit a lot of cards for grading. But sometimes you see something like this and you're like, it just makes you think, like, what are we really doing here? And not that I'm going to, you know, now go change my habits or anything like that, but just sort of got me thinking big picture about grading and what it what it represents and how much value we put on it at times. I certainly, certainly way too much at times. But uh, would love to hear other people's thoughts on the comment. You know, great comment as it, Got me, uh, you know, pondering the, the mysteries of the universe. But that's it for now. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed. And again, happy holidays uh, to you and all your loved ones. Merry Christmas. And we'll see you all again next time. Thanks, everyone.